What's up, everybody? Hello and welcome to episode number 108 of the VK Bros. With the VK Bros, Jason and Alex Von Cannell. How are you this morning, bro? I'm a little sore in the neck mm-hmm. from uh, yesterday because, like, you worked yesterday, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I worked a little bit, but I got a massage. And shout out to City Cave and Paddington. Mm-hmm. This guy knew all the spots. He knew all the spots. Because I get a lot of tension built up in my neck, like there, mm-hmm. uh, a lot in the traps. Mm-hmm. I had he said something about, um, I have, like I have constant tension on my traps. Probably why they're so huge. And I have these bands in my legs that that sort of give me a little bit of not dra- not drama, but I definitely notice when someone sticks their fingers in them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Amazing. So all of your all of your muscle pain is localized around neck and traps and where in your legs? Like next to so if you run down your shin, the outside of your shin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you go like maybe another forty degrees around, mm-hmm. on the back side of it, there's a bend next to my calves. Right. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. So, so you got no muscle soreness in between. <laughs> it's just those two things. Yeah. That's weird. That's yeah, office boy stuff, I think. I think a lot or, of the neck and trap stuff is bend over on a keyboard or on your phone. Well, <clears throat> I don't. I try to spend like no time on the computer. Although I do play a lot of video games at night. <laughs> but it could be driving. Uh, feet, I, feet like this. Hands like this. How much driving do you really do these days? More than I sit in front of the computer. Are you sure? No. I. I doubt it. How long did you game for last night? Three hours. How long do, is your commute to work? Twelve minutes. <laughs> Science. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, today we're going to get into uh, a few big subjects. Uh, mm. We're going to be talking about the Queensland government docking certain teachers' pays. It's a very interesting story. We're going to be talking about uh, an update from Ukraine, which is a very... An update on Ukraine, not from Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. a more accurate way of describing it. And yeah, we're also going to be uh, talking about the, the the science himself, Anthony Fauci's pending retirement, because mm-hmm. he has announced his resignation. Uh, I think we should start with the, the teachers, though, the teacher story. This is a surprising story. So it, it, it broke at, like, the start, like, I think on Monday. Mm. And there was an announcement from Queensland Education that... Teachers that did not get jabbed and who were stood down but are now allowed back because there's literally no mandate rules anymore mm-hmm. will be dropped down a peg on their pay, on the pay, scale. F- yep. pay scale for 18 weeks as punishment for non-compliance. Mm. <clears throat> now, I tried to find the actual letter. I, I tried to as well. I couldn't find it. I th- so all I did was gra- I got a screen grab off one section of it. Yep. And I'll just read it out. Sure. Now, this is from Department of Education, Queensland Government Department of Education. It is important that you're aware of the seriousness with which the department views your inappropriate behaviour and failure to comply <laughs> with the direction. You should be aware that any further substantiated allegations and or a breach of the code of conduct or standard of practice will be viewed very seriously and may result in the termination of your employment. Mm-hmm. So just to, I mean... To paint a bit of a picture of it, they they introduced mandates. They thought only one percent of the teachers didn't partake in the in in the uh, experiment. Ninety nine percent compliance. They they is the number that they're quoting. And a lot of them uh, stood down, or some of them got exemptions mm-hmm. to uh, to work. And now that they're back, now they're trying to punch them. Yeah, from, from my experience, the the ones who didn't get exemptions, were, so when I say experience, anecdotal experience with my friends who were teachers, yeah. uh, the ones who were stood down because they didn't get exem- exemptions, I believe were stood down without pay, depending on which school you're at, some of them got pay. The ones who got exemptions, a lot of them were still not allowed into the classroom, so they were stood down but on full pay. Yeah, which is funny because I had... This is an interesting fact because I, I was trying to ask my network, trying to find out what was going on. No one's talking about it at the schools. Right. Now, mainly because 99% of the people it does not affect. 
So I can mm-hmm. kind of see why. But I did hear from someone that was at a uh, at a barbecue during the week, and he he pressed someone, and she was saying that the teachers hated on those people that didn't partake mm-hmm. because they got stood down with pay. Yeah. While they all had to work under highly, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was <clears> kind of had to take. Lo- yeah. It, it is, but this is something that we discuss all the time, which is misplaced fury. Yeah, to- totally. Yeah, actually, right? totally. And there's a few things about this subject which I find fascinating. The number one factor, as you previously outlined, is that this is a retrospective punishment after the rules have changed. Yeah. So these teachers were already punished, whether that was financially because they're still down without pay or whether it's because they've been vilified by the mm. department and by their colleagues. <clears throat> And demonize, and there is, I know that there is a a sense of uh, hatred against these particular mm-hmm. minority teachers. Especially then, it's kind of died down now, but th- back then it was fierce. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and so, yeah, now, now the government is retroactively punishing these people again mm. after all the rules have changed. Yeah. So, and why did the rules change? Because the science changed. Right? <laughs> mm. um, do you, the, this is if you if you're not a teacher, do not be fooled into thinking that this doesn't affect you. Because do you know what this is? This is the social credit system. A lot of people were saying it. <clears throat> a lot of people were saying it. it's like how can we? And and look, you will obviously go down the rabbit hole far further than I will. So I'm try, like I I will try to play devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. I'm really struggling to find. The only time I'd it's just, extremely difficult to steal man the Queensland government's argument. The only way I would fine. possibly justify it is if the teachers that are getting docked were ones that got paid the whole time. Maybe you could justify it, although I do think it, like industrial law probably wouldn't agree with that. Yeah, which is uh, probably another. I think there is something happening next week in... In Victoria. No, no. Queens. So when the when the story broke, Channel 7 spoke to the leader of the teachers union. Mm-hmm. And she was talking <laughs> about how insidious this thing is and it's, it's so bad and ne- never happened, but it's only the start of a bigger problem. Mm-hmm. And because she's like, whoa, like, what do you mean? And she said, there is something coming into parliament next week, mm-hmm. this, week this week when this is launched that we need to keep an eye on. Mm. And I dug, uh, I had a little bit of a dig. What, well, you predicted it. You said they'll change the industrial relations rules to make this absolutely allowable. allowable. But I've heard there's going to be changes in industrial regulations to stop the red union from becoming a formalized union. So when all this stuff was happening, the teachers union did not help the teachers. No. Sorry, did not help the teachers that weren't willing to participate in the experiment. That's right. Okay. That's right. They didn't support, they didn't offer all of their membership the same level of support. And the members that went, so generally with the teachers, if something happens that is untoward or whatever, generally, if you're a member of the union, you go to the union for yeah. help. And the unvaccinated teachers went to the union for help and the union sided with the government. Yeah. They said, we're helping the government facilitate. That's right. Now, so that all turned out to be effectively a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah, they're still holding those same sentiment across mm-hmm. because the mandates aren't there anymore. If the, you know, if you really right. believe that it worked, then you'd keep the mandates. It would make sense, right? If the science mm-hmm. said that those people were a yep. risk, then you'd keep them. And and let's out not of forget, way. let's not forget the justification for the mandates in the first place was because uh, children under, at the time the mandates came in. Children under a certain age, which was 11, I believe, at the time, uh, were not able to get vaccinated. So the justification, and you can go back and you can watch Anastasia Palaszczuk standing up in... It's probably been scalped from the internet. Yeah, uh, maybe. But was saying, like, this is to protect the children. Yeah. And the whole... The justification was, if you got vaccinated, you would not pass the virus on to children. That was the justification. Mm. It is clear that that is not the case. Mm. That's why the mandates have been removed. Mm. And yet we're going back to punish. So 
what you were saying. Well, is hold on. That, so to go to about the union thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in the midst of all that, a new uh, teachers union started, and it's got a real that, the red union had actually actually started up a few years ago, but it was very small time. Right, and only because the red union isn't just for teachers; it's for a lot of public service professions. Ah, uh, okay, okay, and. The only reason why it's front of mind for me is because it came to a head during the um, early lockdown stuff in Melbourne, particularly around construction workers, because construction workers had a similar problem with these teachers in that the construction workers who were made to stand down went to their union for help and their union backed the uh, Victorian Labor government. Oh, that's when the riots happened. That's when the riots happened. Yeah. But this red union, a lot of a lot of the members of the construction union quit that union, went to the red union, and then there was a lot of problems uh, with the red union workers not getting employment and that sort of thing. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. So I didn't know that. I didn't know. So that. one, that, one thing about unions that everyone needs to understand: why do unions exist? Unions are supposed to exist to assist their members in dealing with the government to get fairer conditions, better pay. Not just governments, but. Employers. Employers, yep. right. Now, unions take membership fees from their members. That's how they make their money. So you're literally paying these unions for a service. Mm. So it would make sense that if you're paying your union for a service that you are not then receiving, that you might go to a union that is more supportive. Sure. Now, and an element to this, and I don't know if this is where you were going, were you going to be speaking... So there seems to be potentially, and this is uh, spitballing, there seems to be a potential financial element involved in this between the Labor Party, the Queensland Teachers Union, and obviously the members. Because the Queensland Teachers Union pays a percentage of your union fees to the Labor Party every year as political donations. Oh, okay. They are didn't know that. deep, yeah. So this is the problem with unions and Labor governments. Yeah. Labor has always been about the workers, and that's why they've always been in intertwined with unions. Yep. Right? Which would make sense. Makes perfect sense. Yes. Except when it, it makes sense when those unions are fighting for the rights of their workers with the government and using their uh, political power from the donations to go, hey, we donate you X amount of money, you need to change this and give the, give the workers what yep. they want. That makes sense. What is concerning is now it seems to be a top-down dictatorial approach where the government tells the union what to tell the workers, even though the workers are paying the union who then forwards some of that money to the government. Yeah. And where, what is the, I guess, the conspiratorial element to this is, like you said, a lot of those members who weren't being supported by the Queensland Teachers Union quit that union, therefore taking their membership fees away, and went to the Red Union for support. So what does that mean? The Queensland Labor Party no longer receives donations. Ooh, interesting. Mm. Might, might have some breaking news here for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the Queensland Labor Party no longer receives membership fees via the union from those people. So now it's like this financial penalty is like a punishment and also a cash grab at the same time from these particular teachers who've taken money away from the Labor Party. It's... It's so interesting that you went down that way and you're obviously very well versed in it and that makes total sense because I was taking the usual Jason approach and I was like, this is like a control thing. You don't, like we know, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. So mm -hmm. you don't want this new monster growing yeah. being the red union. Mm -hmm. um, so let's wipe them out, mm. which we think is going to happen um, this week. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe not. And what is interesting too is that how often do governments talk, come out talking and giving rhetoric in regards to the necessity for competition when it comes to like the business landscape, for example. Yeah. Like when we talk about having a free market economy, one of the things that keeps costs down and therefore inflation down is having competition in the marketplace yeah. where you have comp competing businesses all with different products of different qualities, but they have to compete on price. As soon as you remove the competition, well, the monopoly that remains can mm. jack the prices up, yep. which makes everything more expensive. And it doesn't matter the service you provide because you've got no option. That's right. And I, I think about, there's a lot of this stuff going on at the moment around the world. And a good example is Live Golf. So the PGA Tour has never had a competitor before. Yeah. Now all of a sudden they do, and the competitor's got lots of money, and they're stealing people away. Now, what's the PGA Tour doing? They're going ham 
at anyone who has gone to live golf, like there's all, it's the same tactics. It's the, um, the disparaging of their character. Oh, go on Saudi money. Or what are the Saudi, like all of As the, they have a PGA tournament in Saudi Arabia. That's right. So, Is Saudi Arabia Saudi? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a PGA tour there. Saudi Arabia, that's in Queensland. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, get, getting back to the point, uh, I, I believe there's a few things about this I believe are the most insidious. Number one is if we as a society accept this punishment, regardless of whether you believe in it or not, that is a drip feed step forward towards the social credit system. Mm. Because we already have elements <laughs> of a social credit system. Things like uh, laws in regards to driving behavior. You get caught speeding, you get fined this amount of money, you lose this many points. That in a way is like a social credit system. But all of us kind of agreed to that. Like you, we all know that- I did not agree with it. I, yeah. I get that. But you understand that those laws were already in place when you went to get your license and you bought your car. What is concerning about this punishment is that this is a punishment that was not in place beforehand, which as one of the people from the teachers union did say, uh, being stood down without pay, which is what a lot of these teachers got is normally like in the public service act or whatever it is. It's normally reserved for people who've, um, been charged with serious yeah, misconduct. Yeah. yeah. How you can charge someone with serious misconduct for not taking part in a vaccine trial, which is what it is still to yeah. this day until the trial's over in 2023, cannot be classified as serious misconduct. Yeah. And especially under, like, you know, the Nuremberg Code, which internationally governs. Well, especially when, like, if, if it was serious, it tried to change the subject matter and say, is something serious misconduct if it only is for a particular point in time? And then yeah. after that, like, subsequent of that time, it's no longer... Yeah. A serious misconduct. And the scariest thing about Queensland is that there is no lower house. So the Labor government can just get through whatever legislation they want. And now, like you said, it looks like they're literally going to change the laws to make what they're trying to do now legal. Yeah. Get out, teachers. Get out. Well, if you're, if you're, sorry, if you're working in an environment that is willing to do that, uh, you need, I think it would be a foolish idea to peg your hopes on that industry. If you're not looking, seeking alternate opportunities. You can definitely have be open op to alternate opportunities. I'd be getting out of the teachers union because money talks. If you want to change your industry. Oh, for sure. Take yep. your money away from the teachers union, give it to the red union. Yep. Because as we have spoken about in the past, when it came to these mandates and those sorts of things, obviously a high percentage of the country, maybe not as high as what is, is advertised, but a high percentage of the company, the country believed in the vaccine and the mandates and the lockdowns and all of those measures enough to support them. The warning that we were trying to give everyone during that period of time is it is okay for you to agree with those things, but you also need to be able to agree to disagree with the people who don't believe in those sure. things. Because one day, as they keep encroaching the control up or the changes in legislation or whatever it is, it will get to a point of something that you don't agree yeah. with. And at that point in time, you'll have wished that you did something earlier when you had the opportunity. This is the opportunity to do something. Yeah. And the easiest thing that the teachers can do to ensure that this insidious march towards more control over your careers goes away is you can pull your money away from the teachers union, which pulls it away from the labor government. And what do you think is going to happen? Are they going to continue on with it when they've got no members and no money coming yeah. in? Probably not. Yeah. They're probably going to have to change their business model, aren't they? Money talks. Money talks. Money, talks. money makes the world it's, go around. It's funny what you said about the percentages, because I was talking to a friend yesterday and we were just sort of spitballing the percentages of our network mm. of uh, um, experimented on and unexperimented on. Mm -hmm. It's like 50 50 not yeah. not not yeah. anywhere near like the 96 yeah and like to be fair our network is probably mainly people around our age or a little bit younger in which we highest weren't... risk of myocarditis oh yeah <laughs> uh, and lowest risk from the disease itself yeah, yeah. um and that that is it's interesting that you brought that up i was having a chat to one of the guys at work uh, about some of the stuff during the week and what's interesting is that we've recently bonded over the fact that both of us were, uh, were ex salespeople. So he did uh, a lot of telemarketing for a long time. Yeah. Toughest gig. Hard gig. Toughest gig in sales. 
Apart from maybe door to door, door to door is probably worse. No, I'd prefer door to door. I'd prefer door to door because yeah, easier when you're in front of people. Yeah, 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 yeah agree. Uh, anyway, we were, we were talking about a lot of stuff, and it's funny because we we we've never met each other before, but being salespeople, we both saw the exact same red flags from the beginning. Yeah, because we just saw the sales pitch when when it started, and so we, we were discussing a lot of these things, and it was just really interesting to bond with someone straight away who you're like we actually see the world in a similar way. And then what we bonded over was the fact that it's so, it's that old saying of like, it is easier to fool someone than to convince them they have been fooled. Yeah. Because in a sales profession, like you experience that every yeah. single day. So you're aware of the fact that that can be done back to you. And in my opinion, the majority of people uh, are not aware that that can be done back to you. And then I was telling them about a video that I used to show new starters in sales about um, not, I don't think, I don't think it was manipulation, but it's like about influence. And you probably know what I'm talking about. There, there was a hotel that did a, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so this hotel did an experiment where they wanted people to reuse their towels for no reason other than it saves them money if you reuse your towels. As opposed to getting fresh towels every day. Exactly. Yeah. And so they put signs up in the rooms and they said, please reuse your towel. And they found that only about like five to 10% of people, these, I'm just going to pull these figures out of my bum because they're not, not accurate, but you can go and find the video on YouTube. Uh, so about five to 10% of people saw the sign and reused their towels. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not really enough. Mm. So they added an environmental element into it. And they said, to save water, please reuse your towel. And they found that adding in that extra reason, which was something that was, you know, front of mind, because this was like 10 years ago. This it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the, the uptake went up to like 30 or 40%. Mm. So a big, big uptick because you actually gave a reason for it. So then they tried again and they said, uh, to save water, 90% of our clients choose mm. to reuse their towels. And then all of a sudden the reusage rate went up to like 85 to 90%. Yeah. And what they found was the number one driver for human behavior is to just be told that everyone else is doing it. Dude, it's that it's the line chasing. Yep. It's it's when I'll, the the story that I've said here before mm -hmm. where when we're walking to Mel uh, we're in Melbourne trying to go to the Formula 1, the line was so long yeah. in the city mm -hmm. and people just tagging on the end of it. Yeah. We walked around the line was for nothing. Mm. We walked around the line. There was no line. It's yep. just people just go there's a line, get on the back of it. Mm -hmm. It is Wild. You, you see this all the time at uh, at uh, shopping centres when, or like the like Coles or Woolies, where there's only one teller open and there's a whole line of people behind it, and then someone goes to open a new teller, and everyone's looking around, going, "Oh, is someone going to go to that one?" Like we just go because we're like they're opening that, we're going to go to yeah, the front of the sure. line. But it's like there's this, it's like this social contract, and what is the reason why this is a driver? And we've spoken about this on the pod before. But back in the caveman days, if you were ostracized from the group, you would die. Hmm. So there is a, a deep-seated survival mechanism in human beings where we want to be part of the group. In our amygdala? I don't Did know. Did I say that? I said that right. That's lizard brain. That's yeah. the old fight That's the flight. reptilian brain. Yeah. yeah. And, and I said the word right the first time. Nice. And, but what you need to keep in mind is this is being used to manipulate you every single day. So I was having a conversation with someone else about this and we we're talking about like the vaccine rollout. And I believe, and I've got nothing to back this up, but I believe that especially early on in the process, they inflated the numbers to make it look like heaps, everyone was running out to get it. Because the number one driver of human behavior is just to be told that everyone else is doing it. Yeah. I've said it before, I used to do this um, when I was selling cars with window tint. I just tell people. 90% of my customers get window tint. Look at the testing lines. Mm -hmm. Look at the testing yeah, yeah. Think of it. If we, if we look back on, if we reflect back on the madness of people waiting eight hours. Yeah. When they're shitting, asymptomatic. Shitting in people's lawns because they couldn't go to the, um, there was no bathrooms. Mm -hmm. To line up to get a test. To tell them that they were allowed to go to work when they were asymptomatic. Right? Mm. That is crazy. So, so what what are we trying to say? This is this is possible, and not only is it possible, it is happening every single day, and you just need to be aware of it because 
you're, you have no idea how many of your decisions are being dictated to you without even knowing it. And more often than not, it's just because everyone else is doing it. I'll give you another was... slick example of that, mm. the herd thing. Uh, I was trying to buy some shoes. I was on the uh, Adidas website. Yeah. And the Adidas website, the mobile version, mm -hmm. is one of the best mobile websites I've been to. Right. It's so fluid. It's so well put together. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I noticed it does is when you open up an item, it'll pop up and say 1,200 people are viewing this right now. Mm, yeah. Right. Creating and, urgency. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's really interesting stuff. But I just want to quickly take you back to uh, when we first started speaking about the pandemic stuff on the pod at late 2020. And we spoke about the um, concept of drip feeding. And... When back then, when we first started speaking about it, was when the government was first talking about releasing their COVID safe app. That was when they were first talk, like you first had to start checking in places. Mm -hmm. And we said, be very careful because this is them drip feeding in, and everything's always sold to us under the guise of safety and convenience. So, oh, great news, guys, we got your COVID safe app. So now you don't have to write everything out. You know, writing's really difficult. So you don't have to write it down on paper. Now you just tap your app and then you, you signed in. How good is that? Well, no, it was before that. No, the, the, the COVID safe app was, um, did that even log in? I never used it. I never used it either. Cause I refused. Was that a check-in thing? It was, yeah. I thought it was supposed to just automatically ping you, wasn't it? It was a, it was a check-in thing that was supposed to automatically ping you if you had checked in at an exposure right, right, site, sorry. Yeah, which okay. as you'll remember, they never did it. Yeah. They never used that function. I think it function. cost $50 million too. <laughs> yeah. So what was that actually designed to do? Well, that was step one towards the vaccine passport, which none of us knew was happening at the time. So when they brought out the vaccine passport, great news, guys. We just got incorporated into your COVID safe app. So it's all there. You already use it. Yeah. Now it's like, it's so convenient for you. It's all in one place. And that was the drip feeding that was going through. And it's only because of probably a higher amount of pushback than what they were expecting, that that stuff's been removed. If no one pushed back, we'd still be using it all today. Thank you, Gold Coast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, the people of the Gold Coast. That's right, the unvaccinated capital of the world. Yeah. Um, where we, yeah, don't well, use, just the where we don't use vaccines or condoms. What do you think it was? The, the do you think it was, you know, the guy that snuck up over the border from Melbourne? Remember that guy? And then they, yeah, yeah. they had the ambulance out front and he walked out to the ambulance like, like yeah, the, the, right. the guy who, who they said was struggling to breathe. And then there was a security camera footage of him like strutting to, <laughs> to the ambulance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was kind of the start, I think, of, I think he's the poster child for... Gold Coasters, not giving a fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but again, how did that story get manipulated by the government and by the media? Yeah. It, it, that They gagged him too, because you could tell when they Absolutely. interviewed him after. He, would, he did not speak like a normal, like, free-thinking yeah. human. Mm -hmm. He spoke like, uh, you've been told, or here's a bag, yeah, take yeah. this and shut up. Yeah, but that taught everyone that if you don't follow the rules you will be broadcast on national television and you will be demonized and ostracized. Mm. So what did everyone do? I don't want that to be me. I better fall in line. Yeah. Masks were the same thing. If you wore a mask out, guess what? You're part of the big group, weren't you? Yeah. If you saw someone without a mask, you were not only upset at them for not complying and potentially killing your granny, but you felt emboldened because you're part of the majority to vilify that person. Yeah. It was really insidious what happened. But getting back to my point, this, this fining of teachers for not mm. making a choice is step one again. This is a drip feed towards more control because it's not just like if they change this legislation to make this stuff legal, it's not just going to be about vaccines. It's it'll be about whatever they want it to be. It'll be about whatever it needs to be. Because one of the most concerning things out of the, the letter that came out was the, the language used where they have lost trust in you. So this was not about you endangering children. This was about you not being a trustworthy individual yeah. because you don't do what you're told. And you should be punished. That's what Even though the rules have changed, and, and in a way, you were right because... It made no difference to transmission whether you were vaccinated or not, which was the justification in the mm. first place. So even though all those rules are changed, you still didn't do what you're told, yeah. and therefore you're untrustworthy, so we will be punishing you. Yeah, even though you were punished um, yeah. at the time. And do not forget how seriously we are taking your behaviour. Yeah. And if you get out of line again, 
you will be punished and you may be terminated. How disgusting and insidious is that? What do you think my advice would be? Get a different job. And? I don't know. Buy Bitcoin. <laughs> if you don't have teachers, government workers, mm -hmm. if you're not reading the signs here, if you're not understanding this pathway, you need to have a percentage of your net worth parked off where someone can't touch it. Here's what I'd be doing too. I, If you were a teacher and you want to remain teaching, I'd be taking my... I would at least quit the teachers union and stop paying them fees. Yep. You don't have to join the red union, but I would at least stop paying the fees because you're not getting any benefit out of it. And I'd be trying to get a job at a private school because private schools are private businesses and the Queensland government controls the public system so they can do whatever changes they want and yep. you're just going to have to cop it. So that's the sorts of moves that I'd be making. Let's move on to another subject. Yep. Uh, do you want to talk? What do you want to talk about next? Do you want to talk about Fauci or do you want to talk about Zelensky? Fauci is probably more of a natural trans yep. transmission. Oh. Natural transmission. So the science himself, Dr. Anthony Fauci, uh, has announced his resignation, which he will be retiring at the end of December. Why is this interesting, Alex? <clears throat> well, I want to. I can we talk? So we've spoken about this throughout the week because it was pretty big news for us. News that there hasn't really been spoken about on mainstream no i haven't seen anything about it's it trying to let him fade away yeah. into the now you had a theory do you want to go through your theory first and then i'll and then i'll say my theory so <clears throat> my first thought because fauci had said even only a few months ago oh, can we tell the people that don't know who anthony fauci is okay so dr anthony fauci is and we referred him as the science because that's how he refers to himself yeah uh, he was the media darling uh throughout the entire pandemic he was and the, the aids pandemic yeah, yeah, but we don't talk about that because it didn't go very well. <laughs> but he he was the guy who, uh, he was the one who was supposed to be able to trust and depend on when Trump was in office. Yeah, even though he made it. But anyway, Well, yeah, I'll, I was going yeah, yeah, to rehash sorry. that too. Sorry. Um, so he is was the director of the National Institutes of Allergies and Infectious Diseases. He's been in that position for about 40 odd years. Uh, fun fact, he's actually the highest paid person in the public service in America. That includes the president. Yeah. He, he gets paid something like $800,000 a year. And what is uh, interesting about Fauci is his job is literally, he is the signature that is required for any funding for any research in the American health sector. And when we say in the American, American health sector, America does uh <clears throat> pays grants all over the world yeah. like there's research facilities here that have funding that would be signed off by that's right now um so when when you talked about like the covid narrative for example and when early on anyone was wondering why no medical professionals or researchers were speaking against the narrative it's because if you did he would cut off the purse strings you would never get funding ever again mm. you'd lose your career so <clears throat> he's he's the science he's the guy now i'll tell my theory after i explain uh, sure. i, I want to revisit conspiracy corner from a while ago in case we've got any new viewers on why fauci is potentially oh a, we do have two new viewers thank you oh yeah two new subs you? yeah oh yeah um anyone else who's watching is not subscribed subscribe now. yeah we know 60 percent aren't subscribed yeah so yeah. just just keep just push the button uh, be like the herd yeah that's right everyone else is doing it so you should yeah. do it too yeah well, um, they're not actually doing it, so that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. Yeah. Uh, I want to be different, just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, to go back to paint a picture of... Because, obviously, one of the things that has essentially been proven and now doesn't get spoken about at all is the lab leak theory. Yeah. And where what is super interesting about Fauci's involvement is he's literally... If you drew, like, a Venn diagram... So you know what a Venn diagram is? Yes. So on the one... It doesn't look like what you just... Yeah, so yeah, you like just drew tits. This is what I'm <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, if you drew a Venn diagram and on the one hand you had development and monetization of vaccines and on the other hand you had creation of SARS-CoV-2, that Venn diagram overlaps and Fauci's in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason for this is because... In his time as the director of the NIAID, he was the one pushing for the ban on gain-of-function research to be removed. So what is gain-of-function? Gain-of-function is research done on viruses where they experiment on them to make them either more transmissible or more deadly to human beings. Yeah, can you and redo that part because you double-negatived? Did I? Yeah. 
Which part? You said you, he's he's pushing against the removal of gain of function research. Okay, so gain of function research was legal. Yeah, it was then banned under the Obama administration in two thousand and fourteen, yep. and the entire time he pushed against that, saying that the ends justifies the means, and it's it's important to have. And then quietly under the Trump administration, he actually reversed the ban on his own and started funding it again. Now, if anyone remembers the story, the NIAID funded a company called the Eco Health Alliance, headed up by Dr. Peter Daszak, who then, uh, through a subgrant, sent that money to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And what you'll also remember is that when China eventually let the research team in from the World Health Organization to investigate what happened 12 months after COVID hit, the only American that was involved in that party of like eight or nine people was Dr. Peter Daszak. So the and guy- the lab smelt of bleach. <laughs> yeah. So the guy who was directly uh, responsible for funding the research was the guy who got sent in and then came back and goes, oh no, there's nothing to see here. It must've been natural origin. So that's on the one side of it. On the other side of it, so the NIAID is a sub-branch of the National Institutes of Health but it's the most important sub-branch. So out of the two big dogs in the National Institute of Health, you've got Fauci and you've got Dr. Francis Collins, who was the head of the NIH. The NIH did a deal with Moderna and actually has co-ownership over the Moderna vaccine. Because if you remember correctly, uh, everyone spoke about early on about how the mRNA technology was created using public funding. Mm. So that, that technology that was created was then given to Moderna in partnership with the NIH, which means they split profits on the Moderna vaccine. Mm. And what's interesting is a story that you brought up with me today that yeah, I had not even I'll, heard of, I'll find it. which you need to find. So, in other words, to, to sum it up, it appears that Fauci signed off on the research grant that got sent to Wuhan to create the virus at the same time as him and the National Institutes of Health had done a deal with Moderna to create mRNA vaccines. It's like cause and effect. Best business model ever. Moderna sues Pfizer and BioNTech for patent infringement over COVID-19 vax. Because it's the mRNA technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. So anyway, he's retiring. Now, what was my theory on, on his retirement? I think, because he is a doctor. Well, he's a doctor. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. He understands health. Yep. I think he's extremely concerned about Joe Biden's health. And if he is still in that job when Biden potentially falls off the perch or gets voted out, or more importantly, when the midterm elections happen this year and the anticipated Republican red wave comes through and takes power in the houses, I think he's concerned that he's going to get prosecuted. And he wants to get out of there with a letter of immunity in hand from Joe Biden before any of that stuff happened. Joey B. <clears throat> because he had said only a few months ago he intended on seeing out at least Joe Biden's term, which has got another two years in it. But didn't he say seeing out Joe Biden's term or the end of the pandy? Wasn't yeah. those the two? Yeah, the two neither things? of which are happening by the end of this year. Yeah. Which is why I feel like with the anticipated red wave of Republicans coming in who will want to prosecute him, because they've tried before, but he's been protected by the Democrats in the House because yeah. they've had the majority in all three houses of government. I think he's trying to get out with a letter of immunity in hand from Joe Biden while he still has the chance. Now, what I think, I like that theory. Mm. I like that theory a lot, but I like this one better. <laughs> I think he's leaving so he can run in the midterms yeah, as a Democratic party that. leader. Yeah. So, not party leader, sorry, a Democratic... As uh, the presidential nominee. Yeah. Because they don't have anyone else. No. If it, so, from what I'm seeing... I thought, I thought you were going to start... Okay. Jump. Okay. 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 So what I think Trump people heads. are, a lot of people are saying in America, if Trump runs, the only person that can beat him is Biden. Mm -hmm. If anyone else runs, then you can look for another, uh, another um, candidate. Yeah. Is is kind of the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah. Now I think Fauci has a absolute god complex. Now he has been the man the whole time. He's at, he's been. You know, he's been in front of uh, Senate grillings. He's come out squeaky clean out of everything. Did, well, like, like all these crimes against humanity have literally just, like, like what just just rolled off his back. Did you hear about? Uh, he was in an interview recently talking about 
uh, how there has been an uptick in people going to universities to study medical professions. And he's like, now I don't call it this, but they call it the Fauci effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like, and he's like, it's, it's not me. It's what I symbolize, which is like truth and virtue. And like, this is, it's the equivalent of people giving themselves their own nickname. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, call me T-Bone. Like, yeah. it's literally going, I want people to say this, and no one else is saying it, so I'm going to say it myself and hope that people start adopting it. Which but- is why, I, and he said he's had a movie about him, about his life. Yeah. And I think he's on this euphoric fun, rise. Fun fact, let's go walk down memory lane just quickly. The Fauci movie was the reason for the removal of the dislike button on YouTube. yeah, yeah. If you guys remember that, when the Fauci movie, the ads came out and rolled on YouTube, that was like 99% dislike. It was the record. It was the it highest, was the dis- it was the most disliked video on the internet. In history. And that's more than why two, they More than removed- two girl, one cup. <laughs> yeah, well, they ever like that. <laughs> uh, but that's why they removed being able to see the dislikes. It was that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, back to you. Um, he, so I think he's like in an absolute state of euphoria. And I think... <laughs> And look, he's, it's it's probably right. He's probably the Democrats' best chance mm. at going up against... Like, if you pit Trump versus Fauci, yeah. that's a battle. Yeah, it's interesting. And it's actually... But and I'll, say, so I'll even say, so DeSantis, DeSantis is the one... It's either going to be Trump or DeSantis, right? Those are going to be the Republican can, I, candidates. DeSantis isn't running. As he said that. I, he's not said it. But the reason why I say he's... Um, he's not running is because when the raid on Mar-a-Lago happened, DeSantis came out and supported Trump. And if he was thinking of running, he wouldn't have done that. He just would have stayed quiet because mm. he, he doesn't want to big up the guy who would be his competitor. I think if the Republican party is smart, DeSantis is very young. You let Trump run next and take the next four years. And then you get DeSantis in to take yeah. up the next eight. Yeah. You actually guarantee yourself control for an extra four years but i think there was concerns that if they if the democrats can find a good candidate Mm -hmm. oh i think someone even suggested that bernie might be able to have a crack now bernie sanders because it's both parties are weak bernie could come in and bernie's not gonna win well sorry bernie's never gonna win the candidacy because bernie can't be controlled by the democratic establishment that's the reason why they outed him last time he should have won the um the presidential nominee status last time yeah but they removed him because he is too uh opinionated and would not be controlled i actually like bernie bernie's got some good ideas so yeah he's got some not so good ideas too yeah of course Um, they all do so what so i think if because i I know the Democrats think Biden's the only person that can go up against Trump. He will lose. Yeah. He will lose. Like... He can't even read anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> End quote. Yeah. Um, he, even massive <laughs> Biden supporters must know that he has not got the faculties to <clears throat> take on it's a not, challenge. It's not even that. It's... I think that a lot of Democratic voters are waking up now looking around the country and going... This isn't really what I thought was going to happen when yeah. I voted him in. Start a war. Well, <laughs> Start a war. But not even that. The yeah, whole country in itself, inflation. it's not going great. Yeah. And a lot of the things that they promised uh, just haven't materialized at all that would have benefited the country. Because, sure. like, you know, not to get off subject too much, but, like, they, Biden in his, um, in his speeches beforehand was talking about, like, the legalization of marijuana. And hasn't done anything about it obviously certain states have legalized it and whatever but hasn't you know hasn't fought for it federally like they were talking about the roe v wade stuff and then but then came out and publicly supported britney griner who got locked up in russia for having weed which is illegal in russia she would have known the rules and everyone was like bro why didn't you let out the people in prison who have been done for selling an ounce of it like yeah right so that's the sort of thing that uh they haven't done they haven't They've done kept any of their promises yeah, yeah. but what there is one reason why I think that you might be wrong, and it's only just come out recently, mm. which is now that everyone well and truly, I believe, I, I think the minority now still believes the vaccines work. But now that the majority don't, have you noticed how the Democrats now are trying to blame Trump for the vaccines not working? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was going to, I had that in my notes. I was yeah, going to bring yeah. that up because I only caught the end of it. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, and in fairness, 
Trump is responsible for the vaccines. Yes. It was his Operation Warp Speed that got them developed in a record time. Yeah. He got them they out. They did not come out under his reign, though. Well, they held them back, no, 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 remember? No, no. They did, because Joe Biden got vaccinated in December 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the inauguration was January 20, 2021. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So they were just you, No, released. no, he got vaccinated. Yeah, he yeah. got vaccinated in the Oval Office. The Oval Office. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was a... it was Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so now all of a oh, sudden... Oh, can we just put a little bit of... Now, the reason why we were mocking that is because they didn't film it very well mm. and it was actually a mock-up it looked like the seinfeld studio <laughs> where the where the 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 place that he got vaccinated in quotations vaccinated was literally a film set yeah it was it was the the vaccinated equivalent of me going i'm gonna eat this lid of my coffee cup <laughs> 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 um but yeah so what is interesting is obviously there's been a divide in america over the past two years which is if you're a democrat you're pro-vax and everything else and if you're republican you're anti and it was really it's always interesting to me that that was the divide because it was trump's legacy the vaccine mm. and even trump's come out and gone you know we brought you the vaccines and yeah. so he's taking credit for it which he should because it was his program so he can take the credit for all the dumb shit that's happened since then too but that's why I feel like maybe Fauci wouldn't be the nominee apart from the fact that he's 81 years old as well but he's fit 81 he is fit. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Having more money than God can keep you pretty healthy. And baby stem cells. And having access to all the best stuff. <laughs> Give me the bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I wonder if now this last ditch play to win the midterms is to blame the vaccine on Republicans. I wonder if the guy who was the science telling everyone to get vaccinated now all of a sudden doesn't have the darling status with the democratic base that he used to. Yeah, I, I, I agree that does, definitely does put a chink in his armour. But... And don't forget the stories about Fauci signing off on research grants where they locked up beagles in cages and had sandflies eat their eyeballs. Google it, it's a real thing. Yeah, yeah, no one talks about it now. Yeah. I, I don't think any of that stuff matters. I think he got away with so much. Mm. I, I don't think that really matters. Yeah. But where the, what I pulled out of that story is is if you're now going to associate the vaccine with Trump, mm -hmm. now it's okay for the left to hate the vaccine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's that's awesome for us. Mm. <laughs> like that. That's. I was, so just on a side note, we can sort of move on from this. But um, do you know one thing I was thinking about lately? When was the last time we had a new variant? No, it's given up. Man. It's been months. Yeah. Do you think it's a coincidence that with the dropping of mandates all over the Western world that we've stopped the proliferation of variants? Totally. Yeah. So remember early on, those guys like Gerd van der Bosch that were coming out saying, you don't vaccinate into a pandemic because you put evolutionary pressure on the virus and you force mutations that wouldn't normally be there. Yeah, you've built the virus a gym. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you treat people... You get rid of the virus as much as you possibly can, and then you vaccinate afterwards. And what we saw over the last 18 months of the vaccine rollout is the more we vaccinated, the more variants were produced. Mm. And now, as people have started dropping off the booster train and that sort of thing, when it's really strange how, like, when you removed mandates, all these people who loved the vaccine before just stopped taking it. So strange. Just a quick side note friend of my network their parents have had to leave their house for a covid scare and move in to an unvaccinated guy's house <laughs> <laughs> for safety <laughs> wow <laughs> classic um but so yeah we we've not had a new variant for for months and i also wonder if it's because they're just not... It's, uh, not, it's not selling. Well, it's not, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, not moving units like it was. Before. Well, that's right. And yeah. maybe... And again, go back to when we were first rolling this thing out. I was saying... I read... So, did the, the big short? I looked. Yeah. I read the documentation. The provisional approval in Australia was lasting until 2023. So, I always knew that this experiment was going to be finishing in 2023. And all of a sudden, no more new variants... No more mandates. 
also explains why doctors are now like it's in the news that they can't afford to just bulk bill anymore they have mm. to co-pay yeah because oh man these jabs were like this was great business they were making so the much testing, money yeah yeah the testing and the jabs and i noticed i think bloomberg posted up the other day an article saying who profited the most from the vaccine it's changing like the media was always going to step first yeah, yeah, yeah this is step one of the downfall of. speaking of media i caught something on no agenda the other day and um they had a, a super cut of clips from Australian news sources talking about vaccine adverse events and deaths. Mm. And it was, I had no idea because I don't really watch our mainstream media, corporate media anymore, but it was remarkable. They had like 30 headlines of them reading it out, talking about people either having serious adverse events or dying. And 27 out of the 30 stories were all about AstraZeneca and three out of the 30 were from Pfizer. Yeah. And, they were flabbergasted because they were like, uh, Pfizer's the marketing gurus. They're the best marketers out of all the vaccine companies. Totally. So they were like, why hasn't, like, if it's Pfizer doing the marketing spend, why would they mention Pfizer vaccines? I understand them going after AstraZeneca, but where, where's all the Moderna clips? And they, were, they couldn't figure it out. And then I'm just like sitting there in my car going, it's because our government's done a deal with Moderna. We've got a Moderna factory being built in Victoria. Yeah. But by 2024, they're planning on being pumping out 100 million RNA, um, mRNA vaccine units per year. Yeah. That's why. So what we're talking about at the beginning of this conversation about uh, social conditioning and what everyone else is doing, that is they're already planting the seeds for you to trust Moderna more than these other companies because there'll be a financial benefit to you trusting Moderna more than these other yeah. companies in 2024. That's we, how insidious this shit can is. Can we just put a line in the sand here and say mRNA technology is trash? Well, it depends who you ask, because if you're an mRNA technology producer such as Pfizer, who creates a vaccine which doesn't solve the problem, which the problem then justifies the selling of more vaccines, which then the further problem then justifies the selling of antiviral medications, which all of us conspiracy theorists are talking about early treatment and antivirals right at the beginning of the pandemic, but we were demonized for that. Uh, and then they sell drugs like Paxlovid, which one of the side effects of Paxlovid is that once you stop your five-day treatment of Paxlovid, you have a rebound case of COVID, which is what Joe Biden and Jill Biden both just had their second time, uh, which then your rebound case justifies more Paxlovid. <laughs> like, it's the best mRNA rocks! That's called, that's called vertical integration. That's yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, quickly, can we move to the news that I posted up on my socials yesterday about yes. the Victorian... Class action. Class action. So there is a there is a class action lawsuit against the Victorian government, which mm -hmm. is um, being uh, uh, fought by the like retailers association, um, a bunch of like bus effectively business groups, yep. business bodies. Mm -hmm. Now, the they they are accusing the government of botching the hotel quarantine. Mm -hmm. Um, which apparently they have geo, what's it called? So, let, you, you, yeah, you, I'll, I'll try to explain this. this as specifically as I can. Uh, every case against the government about this vaccine and lockdown stuff, all the COVID measures has failed. Yeah. And they, it's generally because the judges go, I ain't a scientist. I'm not ruling on the efficacy of the vaccine. Well, yeah, no science. yeah. Therefore we're going to side with the government. I think this potentially has legs because what they are alleging is this, uh, they are suing the government for damages to their businesses caused by the second lockdown. Yeah. The second lockdown came after the Victorian government had uh, mandated the, uh, the compulsory quarantine requirements. And the way you're talking about genomic sequencing, the explosion of cases that resulted in the second lockdown, which is the longest one, which cost everyone all their money and all their businesses, they sequence those genomes back to the hotel people in the hotel quarantine, and essentially, when the government because the security guards are fucking them all. Yeah, they're playing hide the sausage with with guests. At the same time that we were being told that COVID, that someone opened a door and it stuck down the hallway and infected someone. It's equivalent of like like the ET movie, you know, when they were all in the all in those big um, hazmat suits, but someone just gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but so in other words, what, what the claim is this, when the government imposed the mandatory quarantine uh, requirements, they took on the duty of care yeah. to do that properly and they failed and they've got the... And because of that failure, 
the extent the, the state into lockdown. Exactly. Therefore, your failure at your duty of care makes you liable for the financial loss of these companies. Yeah. I actually think this has legs. Yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic case because it doesn't require any gray area science bullshit. Yeah. And... It, it is going to be fascinating to see what happens with it. We've got to keep our eye on it. Yeah, yeah. so we, we will keep you posted on that. I do like it. I I agree with you. It's hard, right? Every every court case. The only one that I think was successful in the world was was Alberta in Canada, mm-hmm. where at very, very early on, some rich guy got... He couldn't do something, so he sued the government and said, yeah, show was... me the difference between COVID and a cold. Yeah. And they couldn't. Yeah. And then they had nothing. That whole... St- and no one talks about it. Yeah, that's right. That entire state has just gone... Yeah, like, they had no restrictions. No, nothing. And that was like over a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that was yeah. really, really, really... But they kept that on the quiet. One last subject before we go. Yeah. Just a story to follow. Uh, I caught... There was a leak from the Washington... This is about Ukraine and more specifically that President Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh... Months ago, when the war was just kicking off, Vladimir Zelensky did an interview with the Washington Post, and it had all the, the, the propaganda in it that the American public required at the time. It, was, it made him the darling of the left-wing media in America, and therefore America itself, mm. which then justified the, the taxpayer's support to send the money to, to help these, the, the democratic, poor Ukrainian, yeah. poor Ukrainian country. Over the last week... Uh, certain parts of that interview that weren't actually aired have been leaked. And the most specific part of it is where Zelensky admits he knew that the Russian invasion was happening weeks before it happened. But due to the fact that um, towards the end of 2021, a lot of Ukrainians were pulling their money out of the bank. I'm guessing fat cats. (laughs) Probably. Because they probably knew what was coming. The oligarchs that we always talk about. So they were pulling the money out of the banks. And the Ukrainian banks have the same system that we do, where they, the banks are only required to hold like 10% of the money they have outstanding, yeah. right? So their balance sheet is 90% in the red. So all these people pulling money out of the banks. And Zelensky said he deliberately did not tell his own people about the impending Russian invasion because he was concerned there would be a run on the banks and it would destroy Ukraine's economy. So that essentially means he allowed people to not allowed sorry he did not give people he purposely kept them in the dark and therefore a lot of the civilians who have perished because of the invasion possibly could have made a different decision had they known that this was going to be happening Mm. for the economy now that sounds really really bad and it is it's disgusting but what i find so interesting about it the way that i looked at this is why has that bit of information been leaked now that to me is the important yeah, factor yeah, yeah, yeah. because the, they're flipping on him. They're flipping on Zelensky. And cause this is the American military industrial complex playbook. What do they do first? They had the interview, which pulled on the heartstrings of the Americans and it justified this sending of billions of dollars of taxpayer money to help the people of Ukraine. That's already been established. And that's been being, I think they're up to like $300 billion or something they've yeah. sent so far um, to Ukraine. So that money has already been made. But now, how do you prolong the conflict? Oh, that Zelensky, we trusted him and he's let his people down. Gonna need some regime change. Mm. It, America does this everywhere. Yeah. Oh, we're going to help support the Ukrainian government so they can better support their people. And Zelensky, he was the bad guy. He was the guy who did all the corrupt things. Nothing to do with us. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go in and help the people. Next minute, how, how many years... Do you want to take a fucking bet on how many decades we're going to be in Ukraine for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the same playbook over and over and over again. It happened in Iraq. It happened in Afghanistan. Well, Iraq, in 2019, they kicked the guy... The people kicked the guy out that yeah. was like the CIA placed the American envoy that yeah, was, yeah. he was leading. They kicked him out. Mm-hmm. And now, like, my the wonton dons over there yeah. having a great time. That's right. And everyone's like way happier now that mm-hmm. an, like a, a true Iraqi is now running. Yeah. Iraq. And you look at, so the justification that America always had to m- remain occupying Afghanistan was that they wanted to kill Osama bin Laden and the number two guy. Can't remember the number two guy's name. And that was the whole justification. Now that they were like, we will not be leaving until we bring him to justice. And then they did the pullout last year. Mm. 
right? They hadn't brought him to justice yet, but they did the pullout last year. And then about three weeks ago, they announced that they had assassinated this dude who was actually living in Sri Lanka. So you didn't need to be in the country Correct. to be able to kill this bloke. Yeah, yeah. You literally did it without having anyone over there within a few months. Yeah. Uh, but it justified rumors. the occupation for the last 20 years. Rumours that he died of natural causes in 2020. But well, there is that as well. Um, anyway, we'll be but, paying very close yes. attention to this story. You guys should too. Uh, get out of the Queensland Teachers Union. Take your money elsewhere. Buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin. And we'll see you next week. Bye.